Have you ever wondered what really happens when two black holes collide? Well, it seems obvious, right? Obviously, you would get a bigger black hole. In fact, way back in 1971, Stephen Hawking used this intuition to come up with a bold law of physics. The total area of black holes can never shrink. But believe it or not, up until now, this was just a theory. A new LIGO detection has not only proven Hawking right, but has also backed up another mind-bending idea, the infamous no-hair theorem. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, we're diving into the second law of black hole mechanics. Can you believe it's already been a decade since the very first gravitational wave was detected? Since then, observatories like LIGO, Virgo and CAGRA have picked up hundreds more of these cosmic ripples from colliding black holes and neutron stars. And now, with LIGO operating at its full design sensitivity, so overcoming nearly all of the noise from Earth itself, these detectors are more powerful than ever. The signal-to-noise ratio has jumped from just 26 in that first historic event, GW150914, to a staggering 80 today. So it's no wonder that the latest detection, GW250114, is their clearest ever. Two nearly equal mass black holes, 33.6 and 32.2 times the mass of our sun, spiraled together in a cataclysm almost identical to that first discovery. But this time, physicists could do more than just see the merger. They've confirmed one of Stephen Hawking's most profound ideas, the area theorem, which later inspired his infamous prediction of Hawking radiation. Now, the surface area of a black hole's event horizon looks deceptively simple. Just like the surface area of a sphere, it is given by this equation. A equals 4 pi r squared, where r is the Schwarzschild radius. This corresponds to the point where the black hole's gravitational pull becomes so strong that not even light can escape. And by plugging in Einstein's equations, that radius becomes this. Here, g is the gravitational constant, c is the speed of light, and m is the mass. So we can write the area as this and simplify it to this. So it's clear here that the area of black hole is directly proportional to the square of the mass. So if you double the mass, you have to quadruple the area. And if you merge two black holes, the total mass and angular momentum of the system has to be conserved. But hang on a second, how can this be possible when we know that during a merger, we also get gravitational waves? This means energy is lost from the system. It's radiated away as these ripples in space-time. And as we all know, energy and mass is equivalent. E equals mc squared. So where does this energy come from? Doesn't this mean that the final black hole should actually lose mass and shrink in size? But that would also break Hawking's area theorem. Now, this is where the concept of irreducible mass becomes key. The mass in the area formula isn't the total mass of the black hole. It's the portion that can never be radiated away or extracted. So the area is actually given by this equation. Now, this subtle distinction saves Stephen Hawking's theorem. A rotating black hole or a Kerr black hole doesn't have just irreducible mass. It also has rotational energy stored in its spin. The total mass that we measure, often just called the black hole's mass, is actually made up of three components. It's irreducible mass, plus its rotational energy, 
plus its electromagnetic energies. So in this equation, J is the angular momentum, so the spin of the black hole, and Q is its charge. Now, astrophysical black holes are expected not to be significantly charged. So basically, its mass and the spin are what dominate. And since the black hole's mass is proportional to its area and mass is conserved, any energy radiated away as gravitational waves must come from that rotational energy of the black hole, not their irreducible mass. The total area never decreases. This is Hawking's famous area theorem. Now, fast forward to January 2025, when the LIGO detectors picked up their cleanest signal ever, GW250114, the coalescence of two nearly equal mass black holes, they independently analyzed the signal before and after the merger. And they showed that the horizon area of the remnant black hole was indeed larger than the sum of the areas of the two initial black holes. This means, for the first time, Hawking's law has been directly confirmed. Now, if that sounds familiar, it should, because this rule actually mirrors the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entropy, or disorder of a system, can never decrease. Hawking realized that black holes might behave like thermodynamic systems, with the black hole's area acting as a form of entropy. But that idea was shocking. If black holes really have entropy, then by definition, they should also have a temperature. And anything with a temperature must radiate heat. But black holes, by their very nature, trap everything inside of them. How could they possibly emit anything at all? Now, in 1974, Hawking found the answer by applying quantum mechanics to the fabric of space-time near the event horizon, he showed that black holes aren't perfectly black. They must slowly leak energy in the form of particles, and this phenomenon is now known as Hawking radiation. This was one of the most fundamental revelations about black holes. And it was a direct result of the insights that began with the area theorem. But that wasn't all. The team working on this also tested the equally iconic no-hair theorem, which states that black holes are simple. An isolated stationary black hole can be completely described by just its mass, spin, and electric charge. So to check this, what they did was they zoomed in to the ring down phase of the merger. The signal emitted as the final black hole settles into a stable state. Now, in this phase, they identified at least two distinct tones in that ringing, a fundamental frequency and an overtone. Using each one independently, they measured the mass and spin of the black hole, and the results matched perfectly. In other words, there were no other properties needed to describe a black hole, or at least this one. Just as general relativity predicted, black holes are Kerr black holes. They have no hair, just mass and spin. Now that's two more fundamental physics principles that are now solved thanks to gravitational waves. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. You can join the community down in the description box below. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Hey space cats, fly with me to the stars.